and welcome to 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and tonight's guest is Annie Brin, Senior Vice President of Publishing, Licensing, and Royalties Administration at Warner Music Group. In her current role, she's responsible for overseeing licensing, rights management, and royalties for all of Warner's U.S. record labels. She's also known for being a driving force for change as one of the company's most visible cultural ambassadors. She's been the company's LGBT Chamber of Commerce delegate for more than three years and joined the Chamber's Board of Directors earlier this year. Her experience has led her to establish Warner's first ever Nashville-based LGBTQ employee resource groups, a very important step in advancing their overall corporate diversity and inclusion strategy. So with all that said, we are very lucky to have her join us. Annie, thanks so much for being here. How's it going? I am great. Thank you so much for having me. Let's dive in. Imagine for a second you're sitting down with your 25-year-old self. What one piece of advice would you give her on a personal note? And what one piece of advice would you give her from a business perspective? So, so I actually just celebrated my 40th birthday this month. Ooh, um, happy so birthday. I've been, thank you. Yes, it was, it was a big one. Um, so I've been doing a lot of, of reflecting uh, recently. And I think the, the one piece of advice I'd give my 25-year-old self really applies to both my personal and professional life. Um, but being comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, you know, the moment you don't feel challenged and you're staying inside of your comfort zone, you really stop growing and learning. Um, so, you know, take risks, be bold and curious. Don't take shortcuts and make your own luck and never stop growing. Is there a specific time throughout your career that you felt you had to kind of embrace change or take a big risk? Oh, all the, all the time. You know, <laughs> I, um, I was at Sony Music Publishing before I came over to the recorded music side at Warner and I was managing a team of five people. And when I came to Warner, um, I had to build a, a team from the ground up. Um, and now I'm overseeing, you know, a team of 30 people. So there wasn't really a course on, you know, how to go from a manager of a small group to, you know, building your own team and and overseeing, you know, two divisions of, of a large um, label. So um, certainly, you know, we all hit obstacles and, and it's part of the journey. Um, and as difficult as some of the experience can be at times, you know, I think overcoming those challenges and getting through on top has helped, you know, really build resilience and confidence um, in my leadership. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious before we go into the next question. So your role of like publishing, licensing, royalties, admin, I feel like that's such an important role in the industry that isn't talked about enough. So how did you get into that? And do you like it? How's it been? <laughs> I, yeah, I love it. You know, I, I got very lucky. So, um, you know, I'm not, I was not a math major. I also did not go to law school, but I, I you know, read um, contracts and negotiate rates all day long. Um, but being, you know, growing up in Music City, I'm around music all the time. And it was kind of, it's, you know, it was part of, of growing up in Nashville and Music City. And so um, I got an internship uh, during college in Nashville and I came back for the summer and um, it was at Sony Music Publishing and I just fell in love with the songwriters. Um, you know, you hear a lot about the artists. You don't know necessarily how many creators are behind the scenes, you know, creating this amazing work. And so um, I've been really fortunate in my career, you know, to be on the publishing side um, early on for 14 years um, and, and making sure that the labels were paying our songwriters. And then when I came to Warner on the recorded music side, now, now my team's job is to make sure that we're paying songwriters. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. All right. Ready for question number two. All right. Every industry has its dirty little secrets, and we all know that it's no different in the music industry. And sometimes people think that's a bad thing, but that isn't always the case. Sometimes they can be good. What's one secret you would like to share with our listeners about the industry? So this was this is a great question. Um, I think as large as the industry feels, it's actually a lot smaller than you think. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, the music industry is six degrees of Kevin Bacon. So <laughs> everyone knows someone who knows someone who knows someone. Um, so for me, you know, I really wanted to maximize um, my network. And I, I always encourage, you know, everyone on my team, you know, um, even if people leave to go to a different company, you know, it's 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 such a small industry and community of, of amazing creators and business business people. Um, so really maximizing your network and treat people with respect and amazing things will happen. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong believer that the more authentic you are, the more you'll stand out in this industry. 
Totally. Yeah. I feel like I've said it so many times on this podcast because so many people have said the same thing, but I think the music industry is like compared to the biggest, smallest city. It's like New York. It's like, I see the same people in New York, but it's such a big city. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. That's a great, great comparison. (laughs) So is there anything specific to Nashville? You know, I feel like Nashville is definitely a publishing town. um, And you feel that sense of intimacy um, amongst companies, you know, we just um, had Americana Fest last week, mm-hmm. and it was so wonderful to go to all of these events and run into people who I hadn't seen, you know, since the pandemic. And so it's, it, you know, you get a sense of that small, small industry, but also a small town, even though Nashville is growing tremendously and at a very fast pace, um, you still get that old spirit of Nashville and, you know, the music really brings that community together. Totally. I feel like there's always something happening in Nashville. Always, always. <laughs> All right. Last question. Throughout your career, I can only imagine you've been asked plenty of questions, whether for an industry conference, the media, or even a promotion. But throughout all those interviews and all of those questions, I'll bet there was one that you've never been asked, but would have liked to. So mm-hmm. what is that question and what would be your answer? So I will say, I love this question, but it was definitely the hardest question for me. <laughs> Makes to, you think. <laughs> about. It really does. Um, and I, you know, I was going to go down one route, but actually kind of change things. Just uh, again, just uh, hitting 40, turning 40, um, <laughs> a lot of reflection. But um, one of the questions that I've never been asked that I would love to just share with people, um, you know, what's the most recent experience I've crossed off my bucket list? Um, and I can, I can say that, you know, after years of not being able to go to live shows due to the pandemic, um, last year, I went to see Dave Matthews Band at the Gorge Amphitheater in Washington. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a bucket list item of mine. It was my 32nd Dave Matthews show. Uh, but oh, wow. I at the Gorge. And Rachel, I don't know if you've been to the Gorge. It's, it's I haven't. the outdoor venue in the country, right up there with Red Rocks. Oh, my gosh. I have to go. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's fun. And it, I, I think answering those types of questions, you know, you get to see a little bit more, um, you know, personality and 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 what I like to do outside of of you know, my day to day. And so live music has always, always been something that I've just been so, so in love with. And so getting to travel again, going to one of the most beautiful um, outdoor venues was really, it was a really cool experience. Yeah, I bet. Is there a specific uh, concert that you remember from when you were first starting out that kind of made you really want to get into this? Um, Billy Joel. Mm. So Billy Joel um, (laughs) at at an outdoor venue as well. And it was right outside of Nashville, about 30, 30 minutes outside of Nashville. Um, and I was 12 years old and that's the first concert I can remember. It wasn't the first concert I went to, but I just remember just like being in love with the entire experience and knowing that I wanted to be involved in the music industry. It's, you know, in whatever level I knew that I didn't want to perform, (laughs) hear me sing, (laughs) um, but, but I knew that I, you know, it was a passion of mine. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful for what I do, um, day to day. That's amazing. What about you, Rachel? What What would your question be? <laughs> Honestly, it's so funny, but almost kind of embarrassing when I talk to people that ask me this question, because I would have to say like one of my first major, major concerts. Okay. Well, my first major concert was a J. Cole concert. So that was just super incredible. Yeah. It was so good live. But I have to say that really like drew me into the experience. It had to be Ariana Grande. <laughs> I can't. There's nothing I can't. wrong with that. She's a fantastic <laughs> performer. Look, I saw yeah. Justin Bieber earlier this year. And I mean, he was he's a great performer. So. Yeah, I remember I saw her like on her very first tour. And I was like, I'm going to work somewhere in the music industry one day. And I think my goal on my bucket list is to work with an artist that like sells out MSG and be there yeah. for like work. Like Harry Styles for 15 nights. You know? Yep. Well, Annie, it has been so great having you on tonight. I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. Thank you. And to all of my listeners, I know you enjoyed hearing from her just as much as I enjoyed speaking with her. So stay tuned for next week's episode of 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. See you next time.